Hey everyone. In this video, we're going to play with visualizing a large data set with Dask and Data Shader. Nominally, this is a visualization example, but actually it's an example about performance because the faster you're able to interact with this data set, the better the experience is going to be. And so we're going to visualize something, it's going to look cool, and then we're going to change our, our processing and it's going to visualize faster. We're going to sort of interact with things and zoom around and that's going to be really satisfying. Then we're going to increase scale and then optimize again. Uh, so I have asked for a DAS cluster from Coiled. I'm going to hook up JupyterLab to it. And I'm going to go ahead and look at my data. This is the classic New York City taxi cab data set. We really just care about sort of plotting a bunch of points. Uh, and mostly we're going to play around with these sort of drop off uh, latitude and longitudes. Now, this data set is a couple hundred million rows. We're going to go up to about a billion rows by the end of the example. Now, if I wanted to, I could plot that by downsampling using like the frac method, or the sample method, and then plotting with matplotlib. Uh, the challenge is that I get this just sort of big blob of blue. It's not a very informative data set. And so instead, I'm going to use a library called Data Shader, uh, which uh, renders large volumes of data a little bit more intelligently. We're going to ask Data Shader to render this data set now. So it's going to sort of look through all the computation. It's going to process it. It's going to take about 30 seconds to process through this data. You can see the progress bar is going here above my head. Um, yeah, and it's going to look nice. So let's give it a second. We'll appreciate the, uh, the image that pops up. Uh, data Shader comes out of the Holoviews projects. It uses Dask, it uses Numba, it uses Pandas and NumPy, uh, and it uses intelligent rendering techniques. And so you get actually really beautiful images that are, um, yeah, I don't know, visualization aware. You can, see, you can see some fun things. You can see, you know, a lot of cabs are dropped off in Manhattan. This area is really bright. You can also pick out things, you know, the various streets and avenues. You can pick up Jersey, parts of it. You also pick up the airports, right? Here's LaGuardia Airport and here's JFK, if you've ever uh, flown in, into or out of them. And we'll go in and inspect those in a bit. It's actually really fun. There's a lot of data here, so we can zoom in. But we wouldn't want to zoom in right now because it takes 30 seconds every time we move around. The simplest thing to do is we could persist our data, right? So rather than read it every time from, from S3 in this case, we're going to read it once right now. And then it'll be hot in memory, and we can play with it in memory afterwards. Um, but I am filling up my memory a little bit. I'm making sort of a, a memory to performance trade-off. And that's fine. This data set fits pretty comfortably in RAM. So now when I, when I render it, it takes not 30 seconds, it takes four seconds. And I'll bet the first time was a little bit slower. I'll bet if I do it again, it'll be even faster. No, it wasn't faster, but still pretty fast. Okay, and so what's cool now is that we can interact with it. So Data Shader interacts with other plotting libraries like Bokeh to do sort of interactivity. And so now I can kind of pan and zoom around and I can play. I can go and inspect my data live. Now my data actually ends up being very janky. There's like lat longitudes of minus a thousand. So I need to zoom in here, this tiny little area. And so every time I zoom, um, I'm going to get sort of this bad image, and then we're going to go and re-render it for me. So thank you, Data Shader. I'm just going to, again, keep zooming into Manhattan. There's all this sort of spurious data that's, that's nonsense. Um, and we're almost there. Yeah, here's our cool image, right? And so now I can actually I can go ahead and zoom in further, right? And so this is neat, right? Every time I click on the left, I do a full data set scan over my data. And I can do that because I've got a bunch of machines holding onto my data in memory. So if I want to, I can go and I can look at you know, LaGuardia here. Right? So here's an airport. You can see the sort of classic loops that people are making. Let's actually zoom into just one of these. Right? And because there's a couple hundred million points, I've actually got you know, many thousands of points in this one small area. And at this point, I'm getting into sort of, you know, like GPS uh, errors. Uh, but it's neat, right? And I can explore my data. So this is very cool. 
by persisting my data in RAM, I was able to get more performance and thus able to do a bit more of an interactive exploration of my data set, even at very large scale. Now, let's say that's not enough data for me and I want to get more, right? So that was one year of data in 2009. Uh, by the year 2013, New York City realized that they shouldn't record super fine-grained information. It was a privacy concern. And so let's go ahead and let's, let's um, we could render it. That'll take a while. I'm actually not going to render it just because it takes a while. Uh, instead, I'm going to persist it like we did before, right? Because I don't want to take a while. I'm happy for it to take a long time once, but then I want to be done. Uh, this plot is not refreshing. What's going on here? But okay. Let's bring up that plot again. There we go. Yeah, so uh, as I am persisting this data in RAM, I can also see a few things are changing in my dashboard. First, my workers are running low on memory. They're sort of, they're growing up, they're going up and up and up. If they get up to this sort of bar, if you're on the right, they're gonna crash. The cloud is gonna kill them. And so what Dask is doing is it is storing some of the data on disk. And we can see that in two ways. First, uh, over here, uh, we can see that for the worker memory, it's starting to actually store not just blue in RAM, it's starting to become gray. We're writing data to disk. We can also see that in the task stream plot uh, with these orange bars. Uh, so we see a few things. We used to see a lot of just blue, and that was just, just reading data. We're also now starting to see some orange, which is writing to disk. And we're starting to see some gaps, right? Dask actually isn't always busy. There's some periods where it's not doing things well. This is going to be pretty slow, actually, so I'm going to stop this. Um, right, I'm going to delete the data frame. Dask is going to stop doing that work, and it's going to slowly sort of reclaim some of that RAM. That would not have been fast. Uh, we want this data to be hot in memory. where We can access it quickly. Disk isn't very easy to access, especially not on some cloud machines, which can have really poor disk. So let's do something else. Let's look at our data set again, but let's look at the data types. Right? We actually don't need all of this data. Some data that is here, it's in like object D type form, which is really expensive. Some things we could do, we could use something like df equals df dot as type. And we could change some of these um, columns to be more efficient types. Vendor ID, for example, we could use you know, the string pyro type, for example. This is a really common thing people are doing now to use not Python objects, but arrow data to store strings. Uh, we could change you know, the trip distance. You know, maybe I don't need this to be float 64, maybe it could be you know, float 32, for example. So these are some things that we could do to reduce the size of our data set, and then we would persist it in memory. But actually, the simplest thing we can do is just to load way less data. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to do df. We're going to pull out just the columns that we need. And this will make everything far more compact. Whoops. I think I also needed passenger count. I think I'm aggregating by passenger count in this data set. Now I can go even further and make these things small data types, but that's, that's fine. So, reading in data more quickly. Um, it's only going to take a little while. There's you know 2,400 partitions. The whole data set's pretty large. It's about a billion rows. Um, I think 800 million technically. Um, and yeah, we're just let that load for a bit. Let's go and compute the length of that data frame as we are waiting. So that'll also get added in. Um, and yeah, we're just going to here for you know. 10 seconds, 20 seconds. And what's nice here on the left, we saw some data on disk that's sort of lying around from before, but these bars are moving forward far more slowly and there's no sort of orange writing that we're seeing here. Everything's way more compact in memory. So we can render that and that is gonna happen in, yeah, in about a few seconds. So it's nice, nice to see, right, eight seconds. Um, we can go a little bit further on this, right? And uh, so this is a nice, nicer image than before. We can zoom in more and get more detailed. But I want to do something else too. <clears throat> so our predictions used to be a few hundred megabytes in size. And 
Now they're probably about 10 megabytes in size because we removed all that extra data. And this means that every little piece of computation that we're doing is small, right? So like we're doing, you know, computations that are 20 milliseconds, you know, nine milliseconds. Uh, and as a result, there's some white space in here. Uh, there's actually like the overhead of doing parallel computing is actually starting to dominate rather than actually doing work. And so what we can do is we can repartition our data so that there's not 2,400 partitions as we see here, uh, but there's gonna be fewer, uh, but this, just the data that we want. And so we're gonna do repartition. There's many ways to use re repartition. Uh, a simple way is Catal partition size. Let's grab 256 megabyte partitions. This is going to force a re, like it's going to go over the data set once, uh, and then start to sort of aggregate things together, and it looks like it's going to about a hundred partitions, which so should be pretty pretty lightweight for Dask. Now it is doing a lot of communication right now; it's moving all those partitions to the right machines. But again, this is a one-off cost, and so we're going to sort of trade off again memory for performance and get something way nicer. And so now rather than eight seconds, let's see what we can do. Uh, that ran at about 1.6 seconds. That's way nicer, right? That's gonna be super fun to interact with. Um, yeah, I'm actually gonna not interact with it. I'm gonna do, oh, let's play well around, it'll be fun. Let's do our zooming thing again. And then, ooh, there's a lot of spurious data when you zoom out to all the other years. Not sure what's going on here. Uh, whoops. That's not the thing that I wanted. So let's zoom in here. And every time I zoom, it's going over the entire data set again. So that's that 1.6 seconds. And it's iterating over a billion rows. Uh, but that's okay, right? It's actually pretty fast because I've done this efficiently, right? This would have taken minutes if I did it naively, but now it's, um, it's feasible, right? It's reasonable to go through a billion rows and just iterate every time. Um, so we're hearing, seeing here, you know, uh, Manhattan. You can see in here there's Central Park. Uh, there's, you know, a few roads that go through Central Park where people are getting dropped off. You might also notice that, you know, it's kind of fuzzy down here. What's going on in this area? Well, if you know Manhattan, this is Midtown where all the really tall buildings are. So actually this is where GPS is really bad. Um, so anyway, it's a cool data set to play with. I'm going to do one more thing. So I'm actually not going to talk about it too much. I'm just going to do it, which, let's see, let's... Let's restart our cluster. So what I want to do is I want to plot both the drop-off locations and the pickup locations. And by seeing those two together, we'll get some nice asymmetry. Um, I'm going to cut out the workers just so they're all fresh. You can see them sort of coming up back up now. <clears throat> so I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to pick up just the columns that I want. I'm also going to remove out all that sort of spurious data. I'm then going to sort of change the data frame around a little bit, so we've got both pickup and drop-off times. And we're just going to load all that data in. So DAS is loading that data. It is sort of reshaping it a little bit. Um, and it's super compact in RAM, which is really nice. All right, we're doing a good job here. Then we load it again, uh, and then we're going to be able to render it. So what's going to be fun about this is that Rather than just see orange here, we're going to see orange and blue. And so we can see where people are getting dropped off and where they're getting picked up. And they'll be different, right? People tend to behave in cabs differently. You get picked up in certain areas, dropped off in certain areas. It'll also just look beautiful, uh, which is going to be fun to, to play with. And we're able to interact with this data set live. Uh, there's now 1.5 uh, billion rows. Um, so we're almost there. Everything's repartitioned nicely. Let's go and render that. The first time it runs, you see these gray bars? That's serialization. It's actually loading in the data shader library on those machines. Remember, we restarted our cluster, so everything is fresh this time. Yeah, so here's our image. Um, <clears throat> and you can see again the sort of like red and blue distinction. Let's go and look at Manhattan again. All right, and let's zoom in even further. All right. Um, and so if you're familiar with Manhattan, you'll notice this sort of asymmetry between the blue on the streets 
and the red on the avenues. And this is, if, you know, if you're familiar with the area, you know, you always go to the big avenues to get a cab, but you often get dropped off on the streets. And it's sort of nice seeing that, that play through here. Uh, it can also be fun to take a look at, um, let's go look at JFK. I used to live in Brooklyn over here, and I would always get a cab ride from JFK. Oh yeah, this is super cool, right? We can see the differences between sort of where you get the sort of the loops so you get the arrivals and departures. And it even looks like there's some like interesting, um, you can see like the fuzziness is probably the lower levels and the more sharp ones are the sort of, uh, are on the higher levels where the GPS has an issue. And, you know, it's fun seeing the different, uh, the different terminals here. Uh, like what's going on down here? Anyway, it's a beautiful data set to play with. And again, it's really neat because every time we zoom around, we are, I used to live over here, uh, we are iterating through a billion rows. And we're able to do so because we're using parallel computing with Dask, yes, but also because we've thought a little bit how to, how to store and shape our data. And this would take minutes to iterate if we were inefficient. And it takes now seconds. And so it's actually a way more pleasant experience. Yeah, so I used to live right over here where it was actually uh, pretty hard to get a cab. I usually had to walk over to like Grand Army Plaza where it was possible to get a cab. So, but you should take the subway anyway. So anyway, that's it. Again, it's a fun experience to sort of interact with a billion rows. And we do that with Dask and by thinking. So thanks all for your time. Cheers.